I just noticed in editing, he was getting a lot of screen time, but not too much. And all of it was good until the teaser, so I'm hoping it's a fake out. <laughs> Hi y'all, we're Kelly and Julie and we're here to find love. Today we're coming at you with a really fun video. If you've been following us for this entire season, you know that we, for Michelle Young's season of The Bachelorette, we have been doing a fantasy league, a fantasy bachelorette league. So a bachelorette fantasy league is basically just a way for bachelor fans to get together and try to guess who the winner of a season is gonna be. So we did a first impression league, which means we watched just episode one of Michelle Young's season and then we tried to guess who was gonna make it all the way to the end of the season based on just watching that first episode. So in this video, we're going to show you an inside behind the scenes look at how we picked out our Bachelorette Fantasy League picks. We recorded ourselves after watching that first episode, we recorded ourselves trying to create our league bracket. So making our picks for who we thought would make it in each rose ceremony after watching just that first episode. and. It's pretty hilarious looking back at what we did. And so we thought we would just post our um, clips of ourselves making our picks. So you can see how we thought about this season's batch of men. And then we can talk about it afterwards. Talk about what did we get wrong? What did we get right? Uh, what would we have done differently? Why did we have the first impressions that we had? Uh, we think this will just be like a really fun way to uh, just think about the nature of first impressions. For those of you who are watching this like far into the future, we are two episodes away from the finale, so we still don't know who wins uh, this season. <laughs> but it is so funny and entertaining to watch now that we are at the end of Michelle's season and we know so much more about each of these contestants. So. Uh, if you are interested in seeing what our true first impressions of these guys were, keep on watching. So before we jump into watching how me and Kelly did our picks, which was hilarious because I didn't see how she did it, I knew that she was going to do it a lot better than I did. And I was 100% correct. You came with notes, you came with receipts, you came with previews. I just had a plucky attitude. I was like, <laughs> what could be... <laughs> what could be you know it was very very metaphysical but as you're watching the video leave some comments below about what you think about our picks and as you're doing your comments we just ask you to just know that like hey this is really just meant to be fun and this is meant to inspire a dialogue we have absolutely loved the conversations you guys have had in our last video it was really fun getting to see everyone debate you know the nate the brandon um the rodney camp so keep that spirit going but just make sure that you know there's a lot of like goodwill towards each other because at the end of the day this is just a tv show but it's nice that we get to just talk about some really important things through this tv show but let's have fun doing it definitely like this is just we're just here having fun uh, we're just not chilling. we're definitely not here <laughs> trying to actually judge any of these guys we can talk about serious things and call on people to do things better if we think that they have made missteps we can do it with love and with generosity and that's mm -hmm. how we're gonna approach our conversations about these contestants and we hope you can approach our conversations in the comments in the same way we can disagree peacefully and have a good time learning from each other so with that in mind let's get into this video This is my moment. This is what I imagine it's like to do a fantasy league um, for football. So this is just gonna be my interpretation of that. This is a first impression league. So we're gonna watch just the first episode, which just aired last night. So after watching just that first episode, then we will try to guess who is going to make it through each ceremony all the way up until the finale. So we have just one episode to gather data from and then we have to try to make our predictions based on just that one episode. So it's definitely not easy and me and Julie do not have a good track record. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at like picking the people that are gonna make it far. Like I can, I'm usually pretty good at like figuring out the final like four, final six 
but some villains do get mixed in there. I am a sucker and I fall for production and they're editing every time. Last time we did it, we didn't do it for Katie's season, but we did do it for Matt James season. And I correctly guessed that he would pick Rachel for Connell. And actually Julie correctly guessed that too. So in that sense, both me and Julie were able to pick the winner from episode one, but the rest of our brackets were not very good. So with these picks, I'm just gonna play it loose. I know that Kelly is going to be, she's pretty discerning about the people that make it far. I think she's really good at picking out the slimy people, the players, just the red flaggers. I can kind of look past it a little bit, but that's something I'm changing. Okay, so we are here on bachelorette.com. This is where we're hosting our bachelorette league. So I'm just gonna go to our league right now. Our league is lovingly titled the most dramatic batch fantasy league ever. Again, because we've done it in the past. Um, there's six of us, we're just some of my friends. Um, and I am gonna go in to make my picks. Okay, there's 18 guys left, so I'm trying to pick who's going to stay for Rose Ceremony 2. Okay, so let's just do the ones that we kind of know. We know Clayton, who's gonna be the bachelor, is going to be there. We've seen Joe in some previews. Um, who else? We've seen Nate in previews. Olu, we've seen in previews. Who else? Who else? Peter, we saw in previews doing some kind of pizza date. Uh, Rick, Rodney, preview guys. This is really what I'm kind of getting out right now. Okay, now there are two guys. We've got Romeo here and Will, who I think it's Will is the one who seems to be getting into a fight with someone. Oh gosh, it's one of these curly-haired guys. I think it's Will who seems to be getting into a fight with someone over a jacket. Uh, so he's gonna stay long enough to do that. So at least for this rose ceremony, we'll keep him. How many? Oh gosh, we have so many picks left. Oh geez. Picking my rose ceremony too. I love Brandon, so let's just throw him in the mix. I think Brandon's great. Mm. Gosh, who Clayton because he's gonna be the bachelor. <laughs> That's just an easy pick. He's at least gonna be final four. I love Jamie. Let's throw Jamie in the mix. Ugh. Joe is kind of whatever, but I can actually see him making it in. Martin, I like his blonde hair. Nate, silent Y. Love him. <laughs> I'm gonna throw him in. Pradeep, love. Mm, you know, Peter introduced Michelle to Cannolis. Why not? You get in the final, the first impression for the second rose ceremony. Mm, I think Spencer is pretty great. Uh, Romeo, you know, I really like Rodney. Romeo, I'm a little bit iffy about. I think that he has some like romantic vibes for sure. I like that he's multilingual, but it feels a little bit like a player thing, but maybe that's just me. Um, I think we see Brandon on a date with somebody. Who else? Daniel, Jamie. I think Jamie's the one we see on a date. Oh, Martin, I'm pretty sure we see on a date at some point. Okay, we can keep him around. I love Rick. <laughs> Let's throw Rick in the mix. Let's see how many people I have left. Oh my God, there's so many men still. The truth is the rest of these guys don't really recognize. <laughs> this is a good moment to check my notes. So in my notes, I try to just take notes throughout the episode of just anyone who's getting screen time, anyone who's getting like little music changes. So, uh, okay, so Chris G, who didn't get too much screen time, um, in this episode, he did at least get Tasha and Caitlin visiting him in his hotel room. So, and they seem to like him. Romeo, I put two stars next to Romeo. I don't know why, but I'll trust whatever gut instinct I had there. Um, gosh, I, I can't, I kind of like Chris S, his goofiness. Let's throw him in. Jamie, good music. He caught her eye and he was the first to get a rose in the rose ceremony. So I feel pretty good about Jamie. I love Garrett. 
Can't believe I missed him. Leroy is pretty great. Malik, yes. Yes. Uh, let's see how many people I have left. I just, I just have one more. I, I think I'll choose... Mm. Will or PJ? I kind of like PJ. I liked his fire truck. <laughs> it had the intended effect. All right, saving my picks. Daniel, I think people felt bad for him. I think maybe Michelle felt bad for him because the guy who came after Daniel had a real fire truck versus Daniel had a baby fire truck. So I'll give him a plus. I mean, I have so many spaces left. Look, four spaces left. So what should I do? Who should I get? I thought Pardeep was so freaking cute, but he didn't get the time of day. Um, Malik, I think I saw him in like the group setting, so maybe I'll keep him just because I saw him in a preview, which I know is not a raving endorsement. <laughs> Uh, who else? Who else? Um, Spencer got a rose during the rose ceremony kind of early. I think he was maybe like fourth rose or something, according to my notes here. So, uh, we'll keep him around. And then I think Leroy too. Leroy, who, I feel like we didn't get much of him in this episode, but Michelle gave him the second rose, which just, you know, maybe suggests that she might be particularly into him. Guess we'll see. How many do I have left? One more. Oh, goodness gracious. Maybe this guy, Casey? Or this guy? He looks kind of... It doesn't really look like the kind of guy who Michelle would like. I mean, honestly, all these white cars, I don't really have a lot of faith that Michelle would like them, but I mean, she can't send all the white guys home. I don't know, they always send all the people of color home when it's a white lead. <laughs> so, who knows? I picked like maybe like two white guys, three? <laughs> okay, I'll keep one more. Let's keep, um, maybe Chris S. That just really doesn't look like the kind of guy she would date. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Chris, he kind of has that look about him, about him like he's gonna cause trouble. And yeah, this show needs trouble, so let's go with Chris. Sure. And we are moving on to the next row of ceremonies. So this is the first impression league. We have to guess who's going to make it to the very end from just watching that first episode, so. <laughs> okay, so next we're into row ceremony three. I'm going to do the same thing, just pick the people who off the top of my head I feel pretty good about um, from these selections. So Joe, I feel pretty good about. I think Martin got kind of he got a good amount of screen time in the previews so for some reason and Jamie too so I kind of felt pretty good about them but I'm gonna keep them obviously Clayton I'm gonna keep Nate I will keep I think Peter Rick Rodney I'm gonna keep them oh my gosh okay I'm really bad with faces and names sometimes unless I really commit it to memory but once again Brandon J is gonna be up there Chris S, let's throw you in, Clayton, obviously. I can see Joe kind of making it far just because of the the preview where he was, he threw the pitch for the baseball game. So I think he's gonna make it decently far. Nate, love you. Mm. PJ. Alum Alumide. I don't want to say his name incorrectly, but O-L-U-M-I-D-E. I think he's going to make it. Martin. <sighs> Pradeep, please make it. I think Rodney's going to make it. I think Spencer's going to make it. I think we saw Brandon kissing someone. Uh, kissing not someone. Michelle in this season. So we'll keep, we'll keep Brandon in. I do not feel <laughs> confident about these choices at all. Oh gosh, I'm gonna keep Malik. Oh gosh, I do not feel good about my choices. I do not feel good. Two more, I literally don't know. I no longer have any ideas. I'm gonna take Chris G maybe and oh gosh. Am I gonna look back on this and be like, how could I not have kept one of these guys? I don't know, maybe. Um, and then I'm gonna go with Daniel. Those are my picks. I really don't feel good about these at all. Okay, I have four left. 
Let's throw in Jamie. Let's throw in Malik. You know, I think Rick is going to be like one of those guys that just kind of surprises you. Let's just throw Rick in there. Then I have one person left. Is it Leroy? Is it Peter? Or is it Romeo? I would rather have her pick Leroy. So Leroy, you get sent in. All right, rose ceremony four. Let's see. Uh, same thing, start with the guys we know, feel good about. Probably keeping Nate way too long. If he ends up actually being a villain, I don't think it actually makes sense to keep him as long as I'm keeping him. But I'm gonna do it just because, I don't know. What else am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep Brandon J, who I know is Julie's favorite. Julie loves them, Brandon J. I don't know if I really see much going on there, but I'm gonna keep him around. So Brandon, Clayton, obviously. Joe, I guess, is gonna make it. As you can see, I'm not a fan of Joe. <laughs> Probably deep, just because I love that, like, brown people on the show. Mm, I love Rodney. Once again, I, okay, wait, I can't think about what I would, who I would pick. I need to think about who Michelle would pick. Okay, so it's Martin. I think Jamie can make it pretty far. Spencer could make it pretty far. Who would she vibe with? With Leroy? I don't know if he would make it. Malik? Mm. So hard because some of these guys didn't really make an impression. Hmm. Dude, I'm just like making shit up at this point. I don't know, but Olu seems like a solid choice too. But again, I can't tell if it was a fake out from the previews, so I just don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't feel that good about Chris J, so I'm gonna get rid of him and then take Olu back. And that's all, Rose Ceremony 4. Sorry, Chris S, you're not making the cut. I'm gonna put Malik in there. Let me see. Okay. Oh, wait, I have one more. Okay, I had one more. All right, so then let me do PJ. Save. After a while, I just get fatigued when I do this. I'm like, whoever, whichever, all that matters is the one that makes it to the end, right? Continuing to keep the people who feel like more sure options. I'm just gonna kind of keep around people that have been seeing in previews. I don't feel good about this league. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I feel bad. Once again, Brandon, I think he's gonna make it far. I just love his vibe. Like, they had a really cute flirtatious energy on the first date and I feel like that's when you just know when you first meet someone and there's that immediate spark. It's something to pay attention to. So Brandon, Clayton, just because I know he's a bachelor. Joe, I guess, Nate, throw you in the mix. <laughs> there are some people that I'm just like, I just want her to, I think Jamie's gonna make it. I think Martin is pretty attractive. Malik is great. And I'm just gonna pick PJ. I don't think Pardeep is gonna make it super far, unfortunately. But I love him he'd make it far in my heart. <laughs> Rose ceremony six, y'all. Okay. <sighs> Who am I really keeping? Who am I really keeping? Do I really feel good about this? No. No, I don't. Nate? Is Nate... Was Nate a fake out? Was Nate a fake out? I can't tell. Is he really gonna be a front runner, or were and or were the previews suggesting that he's gonna be a villain? I just don't know. I don't know. I don't want to make a mistake. I feel good about Joe. I feel good about Rick. I feel good about Robbie. Obviously Clayton. Martin. Should I go back and watch a preview real quick? Maybe I should go back and watch a preview.
this guy. Who is that? That's who I want to know about. Is that Jamie? Does that look like Jamie to you? Oh lordy. Okay, let me get rid of Jamie. I think this was a mistake. <laughs> All right, goodbye, Jamie. We're not keeping you. I literally might need to go back and just like not take Jamie along as far as I did. I don't know why I kept him as long as I did. We'll definitely keep Nate. So our top six is Joe, Rick, Rodney, Nate, Clayton, and Martin. I feel pretty good about that, to be honest. I feel pretty good about that. All right, so World Ceremony six, there is six people, Brandon, Clayton, I already know my final four, so everyone else is kind of like a process of elimination. Mm, mate. I think Martin. Who can I not? Okay, I think Jamie. Yeah, that feels good to me. The final four. Okay, this is who I know for sure, and I'm going to start to categorize it by the like a hierarchy of who I think has a better chance of making it and who doesn't. So first, Nate, my quasi potential villain, who I think is a front runner, just because like, I just noticed in editing, he was getting a lot of screen time, but not too much. And all of it was good until the teaser. So I'm hoping it's a fake out. So I'm gonna put Nate in there. I'm gonna put I don't know. I kind of liked Brandon J. Clayton because I know he's a bachelor. <sighs> Will Joe make it above Martin and Jamie? I'm just going to assume yes because, you know, she already indicated that she liked him and she saw his social media profile and that didn't give her any pause. So I'm just assuming that he's going to make it pretty far. Up four. I'm keeping Nate, I'm keeping Joe, I'm keeping Clayton, I'm keeping Rick. Those are my picks. Now, my only question is, is Nate is the fake out? Or is Rick a fake out? Why am I keeping Rick as long as I am? She's not gonna keep Rick around. I mean, Rodney, she seemed to really be jamming with him. But Nate got the first impression rose. Oh no, how do I make this choice? How do I make this choice? How do I make this choice? Maybe not Rick. Let me, instead of Rick, I don't know why I'm on this Rick train. I mean, she seems to be jamming with Rick. But maybe it's Rodney. I think it could be Rodney. I would love for it to be Rodney, to be honest. I'm gonna keep Rodney. Oh, I don't know how I feel on all these choices, but I'm gonna keep him. I'm gonna keep him. Oh, Lordy, I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. All right, I'm throwing Joe out of the mix. It's Nate, Clayton, Brandon J for me. Bam. Final two. It, to me, is still, it's Nate first, then it's Brandon J. And then final, the last person, the winner, I'm gonna give it to Nate. Bam. I think I just need to go with the obvious, which is Nate, Joe, Clayton. I think those are the obvious choices. All right, top two. I'm gonna put Clayton in the top two. I think that's like a good bet. I think it's a good bet that these two are likely to be in the top two. I mean, they might not be, but I think they're solid bets. Obviously Clayton doesn't win because he's gonna be the bachelor. So I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna give the win to Joe. Not that I feel confident in that, and I don't. I don't feel confident that it's not that I think that Joe is actually going to win this. I just think that he's the surest bet out of, from what we know from night one, I think this is just the surest bet. And that's why I'm going to go with it. I don't feel good. <laughs> in fact, I feel bad. I feel very, very bad. Ugh. All right, Kelly. I can't wait to see your picks. I feel like you're going to... It's gonna be full of better men. <laughs> it's just maybe I've picked some some stragglers have gotten through with like unsavory characteristics, but I feel really good about my final four and then 
proceeding from then on. So I'm kind of okay if some villains do make it past. Don't feel great about them, but those are my selections. Let me know what you would have done differently down below for me or from Julie, whose stuff I haven't seen yet. I'm gonna be very curious to see what she does. But she has a tendency to pick villains to <laughs> go far. So I feel like I'm not too, too worried. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's just get in <laughs> <laughs> i mean first of all it was just hilarious to watch us making these picks just knowing what we know. know now it was just so funny to watch us kind of like the way that we talked about like nate and the way that we talked about joe the way we talked about like chris s like the most random people even the way i thought it was really funny that like you and i had some pretty like nuanced like analysis of romeo who ended up being completely in like not relevant yeah. like it was just he was very, a nothing burger yeah nothing burger <laughs> exactly he was actually really sweet on the men tell all so you know it was just very funny that we have like a lot of analysis about people who just ended up not being relevant at all <laughs> oh well I mean, as i was watching it oh yeah my everything besides my top four i would say villains did make it through I, like i think that you and me our intuition was really spot on about like you predicting it was going to be like a top four like poc and i think me kind of like seeing the brandon thing i i saw that like from the very first episode and i'm so happy that i like listened to my gut instinct that he was gonna make it far yeah i mean you're right i think we both had like our <laughs> some things that we just like completely nailed and some things that we were like mm, that's an opinion <laughs> that's an interesting opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude i mean i kept jamie in and we saw how jamie was during the men the men's tell-all but yeah it was i think first impression rise that's something that jamie is very good at mm. i think he's very very good at wooing people over he's very smooth um didn't romeo say he like dyed his hair to be more like jamie that's a very oh that's a that's a thing that's i didn't know that he thing. said that but oh my god yeah i think he did i mean and it's like jamie just has that like i think that he just has that feeling much like martin where you look like a good date, but as soon as you get to know them, it's like, ooh, the misogyny. Yeah. You can't, like, ignore it. You can't, like, put that away, you know? Right, um, right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, this was a really good case study in first impressions because you can see that, like, we obviously made these choices based on first impressions. We had only watched one episode. We had only just introduced to each of these guys, and so you know, take like Brandon, right? Brandon, that first yeah. episode, he was doing kind of a lot of like lines. He was kind of like dropping like these mm -hmm. like romantic kind of cheesy, not pickup lines, but they were just like very kind of like broad strokes, like romanticism, like, oh my gosh, yeah. you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Like he was just dropping a lot of that. And as a first impression, it's just kind of like, you know, my reaction was just yeah. like, whoa, 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 chill out, man. And so I think that's mm -hmm. kind of why I was just like not very into what he was putting down. But as it turns out, it's not because he's fake. He just actually is that sweet. But like on a mm -hmm. first impression, it's very easy to misinterpret that as him like trying to be like smooth. When in fact, I think he just is that way. That's just how he is. And so... It's a good example of like how, you know, your first impression, I don't necessarily fault myself for having the first impression of Brandon that I did, but I do think it's interesting to see how when you get to know someone better, as we've all gotten to know all of these guys better, we have such a more full picture. And so I think Brandon was a good example of that. Even like Joe, I mean, you and I, Julie, both of us, like we're not big Joe fans at the start of the um Mm -hmm. season and you were very upset to be bringing him along far in your your bracket didn't like it yeah I didn't I mean that's another thing about first impressions too the baseline for understanding all of these people are so low because we're only we can only judge them based on their action and their energy and their words but when there's such a limited resource of information to work with we can kind of like world build around these like very yeah. limited pieces of information so that's why it's so nice when you're dating someone, when you're getting to know someone, to understand that there is this huge gap. And until you can close it through time, 
really just look at them exactly for who they are and how they're presenting themselves to be and not like who they could be like Brandon is a great example of that because he does come across as like a pickup artist player vibe yeah but I remember when I saw the episode I mean I I mean I've worked in matchmaking I've said this before and this was always something my clients would look for in first dates they wanted that spark they wanted someone where they could feel like romance could be there because a lot of people go on dates and it just feels more like um an interview like Mm. a very transactional thing so when there's this hint of emotionality or like romanticism that someone is bringing to the table I think that does woo people over yeah so like Brandon is a really good example of like that first impression joe as well i was really not like i the ghosting thing right we were so (sighs) caught up on the ghosting thing and then it ended up not really being a a thing a thing i mean it kind of ties into what we know about joe now which is that he doesn't talk a lot about his emotions and he doesn't Mm -hmm. communicate very well so he'll close off so it kind of fits in with his overall personality so in that sense we kind of got it right but we had just like this idea about joe that i don't know i I feel like we were very we were just so skeptical about joe in that from that first episode and i don't think that those apprehensions necessarily panned out to be accurate like i think he seems like a fine guy i still don't know if i think that he's a good fit for michelle but i think he's much more of a fine guy than I think we had initially thought. Mm, I agree with that assessment. I think a lot of the men, um, Nate kind of ended up being, I was really compelled by him. I think because he had the first impression rose and I know that traditionally a lot of bachelorettes that who they give their first impression rose ends up being in the top three, if not the front runner. So that's why I had it. But watching it back, I think I was a little bit surprised that I placed him as the first. I think now Mm. I can see Brandon or Joe being um, the front runner. Like, I know that her and Nate have such a connection, but I like those two for her a little bit more. Yeah, well... That's a very unpopular opinion, though. (laughs) As you know. (laughs) Right, I mean, I still feel I eventually switched to my top guy to uh, yeah I saw Nate instead of, I yeah. originally put Joe and I went I switched him to Nate before I like saved my picks but I hadn't recorded that um and I will right. say that I do think that I do just think that Michelle is gonna pick Nate just because um the vibe dude the yeah. chemistry is just so there and so I think that she's just gonna follow her heart which will mean going with the guy with the most chemistry and so mm-hmm. I do think that she's gonna go with Nate so I feel good that I put him in the top but that doesn't necessarily mean that I think that he's the best fit for her as we talked about in great detail in our last video um Mm -hmm. but I do think that that you know it was funny I was so freaked out about Nate becoming a villain throughout my first impression of him like I was just like I think I had been caught off guard by like in the previews someone was like calling him an actor which hasn't come up in the season yet but um you know I think that there was like this understanding that there was going to be maybe like a Nate villain narrative or Mm storyline, which has just never really panned out on the season. So, you know, I kind of was going in with that as an impression of Nate. I knew he was charming. I knew that Michelle had, was like super attracted to him. She gave him the first impression rose, but I still had a little bit of a suspicion that he would end up being a little bit more villainous than he has ended up being, which can, goes to show how much production's editing can affect how you perceive someone, right? And can affect how we interpret each of these characters' contestants' journeys, right? If production hadn't teased this idea of Nate being maybe a villain in the preview, I wouldn't have thought that, I think. Right, mm. and I think I would have been more <clears throat> confident putting him in my top. So production has a big uh has a big influence in how we are perceiving these contestants for sure Mm, that's a good point because i think that production is framing a lot of the top three kind of like in a one-dimensional context like Mm. joe is like this broody mysterious high school Mm. unrealized you know crush potential man and then nate is like kind of this apex of like masculinity and charm and excitement but 
when he represents that, it doesn't have this duality of like also being intellectually stimulating, which I know that mm. some of our commenters said in our last video that like um, Michelle said that he's a lot more complex than that, but production didn't show it. So mm. this is production wanting the audience to be on their toes. Mm. But by doing that, they're taking away a really big part of the relationship that right. we can't see. Right. But I bet if we did see it, we would be a lot more understanding and more decisive about like why Michelle is picking who she's picking. Right. We don't know because production wants us to all think they're on equal footing. Right. When we know they're not. Right. We know that there is like some type of like tally, not tally, but some type of like thing in Michelle's mind where she knows who she wants to see at the end. Yeah. That's More a so, really you know. good point. That's a really, really good point. That there's just a little bit of a, yeah, just like a narrative crafting. Like they're kind of trying mm-hmm. to make sure that we can't guess. We don't know anything. It's like not too yeah. obvious who the winner is going to be. And so in that sense, um, you know, they cast each relationship in a certain way. I do think Joe is another really interesting one of like first impressions versus now because I do think Joe is very, I think we know a lot more about his kind of lack of emotional skill mm-hmm. sets than we, like I feel like in his, my first impression of him, of him was very, I was annoyed by the ghosting thing, but he also just seemed like very clean cut, proper, like just very put together, intellectual, brooding, like, um, type of guy, I, like, wrote down, like, Lex Luthor next to him, like, from Superman. Ooh, that was, like, my, like, note yeah. about him. And now I'm, like, he's not Lex Luthor. He's, like, a high school boy. Like, that's kind of my <laughs> interpretation of him now that we know so much yeah. more about him. Um, but, again, it's just a good example. Like, first impressions are pretty interesting. It's really interesting what we how we interpret people when we first see them versus when we have, you know, whatever – two months of content about them or two months of knowing them, right? We have a much different impression. I mean, I would love to see your notes. <laughs> the notes that you have written out. Oh I just God. thought that was like the funniest thing about when we were doing the picks too. We just had completely I different know. Um, intellectual approaches to it. <laughs> Mine wasn't intellectual at all. <laughs> Yours was intuitive. You had an intuitive approach. Yeah, I was like... Let me just throw something at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, you're like, Rick, <laughs> let's throw Rick in. Why not? Like- I know. But it was, I think that was like the cool thing about Rick was we both intuited that Rick was going to be this like match that Michelle was going to like and keep around for a while. And yeah. she did. She yeah. really liked him. Totally, totally. Mm-hmm. I think we both kind of guessed that. Um, honestly, yeah. I think both of our top like sixes and up all the way through to the top, to the to the winner, I think we had pretty solid guesses um about who we mm-hmm. thought would last the longest in the season and so I think overall I feel pretty good about what we chose considering the amount of information that we had I just I think doing these bachelor leagues are always so fun and funny because it just you know it forces you to one just try to document what you think after the first episode and then you can reflect on that and compare your notes at the end after you have all the information and I think that's a really fun thing about fantasy leagues for I don't know if they do this for other shows but I know they do it for all the bachelor shows and I think it's really fun to do a bachelor fantasy league I think this has been a very interesting and insightful experience for us we hope you've enjoyed you the viewers have enjoyed um watching us talk about our league week by week because we think it's been interesting and fun it's also fun to just have a little competitive competitive like yeah. you know sprinkle on top of what we're doing here and yeah. yeah it just adds a little bit of a almost like a retrospective like what did past kelly think what did past julie think versus what right. today julie and today kelly think <laughs> right i mean today julie thinks kelly is spot on <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's competition then you would win <laughs> But you've always been such like a fiend for board games and stuff like that. I think you're much more competitive than I am. And I'm just kind of like, you know, whatever. I'm just like, I don't know. (laughs) It's okay. It's like a, it's like definitely like a intuitive approach versus like a strategic approach, like kind of dynamic. And I think it's it's great. It makes it for, makes for a very interesting um, kind of comparison of how we get to our kind of final answers. Um, right, right. Viewers, 
we'd love to know what did you think about how the both of us approached our fantasy league what did you think you know watching us make our picks knowing what we know now what did you think about how we thought about each of these contestants what did you think we got right what do you think we got wrong what do you think you would have guessed after the first episode versus what you know now let us know down below we really want to keep the dialogue going in the comments just remember to keep everything respectful let's all agree to disagree we know we love nate we love brandon we love joe any of these guys would be lucky to be with michelle we all know this so it really just matters who she picks and just respecting that but in the interim we can just have a discussion around like why we think our person is the best one you know so next week we will be back um as michelle is down to her top three which we're so excited about we did try watching the men um the men's tell all and it was incomprehensible it was really hard to watch it was a lot of drama it felt like a lot of pettiness we did get to see king olu we got to see rodney we got to see pardeep some of our like season favorites but outside of that it just felt like a lot of um a lot of drama and there wasn't a lot of like points throughout that episode that allowed for like deeper introspection which is like where me and kelly really like to dig into yeah so we decided not to cover it and just to release this video instead because this is fun and it talks about our league which we've been talking about the entire season yeah um it was nice to see clayton's trailer though i will say the trailer was so juicy so i I'm now very excited <laughs> to watch this. <laughs> I'm not Before, that I was like at a negative five. Now yeah. I'm like, hmm. Interesting. I can watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Let me crawl out of my hole. I can watch this shit. <laughs> I think this is, this will be the interesting thing about Clayton's season. While Michelle's season was so like thoughtful and deep and mature, I think Clayton's season will truly be like a dating show. Mm, Like true dating, just a lot of like compatibility, a lot of chemistry, a lot of kissing. Those would be like really fun themes to unpack. So we are looking forward to it a little bit more than we were before. So definitely subscribe (laughs) to our channel, put those notifications on so you can be in touch with when we release our recaps of Clayton's season. We're going to recap every episode as we do with every season. So subscribe to our channel to make sure that you are able to watch along with us. It's going to be a ride. We will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.